we are going to be looking at frequency tables, histograms, and frequency polygons. Uh, what you have probably heard about these in the past are named slightly different things. So histograms, what you might want to know is that that's actually just a bar graph and a frequency polygon is actually a line graph. But the goal of this lesson is to organize and sort information into meaningful statistics. Uh, so for example, <clears throat> If you look at this bar graph here, that is not terribly meaningful because what it has is probably about 50 bars, and sorting information into 50 separate bars is not very useful. Uh, likewise, if you only sort things into two categories, uh, that's not terribly useful except in some cases. Generally what you'd like to do, and you've seen this before, is, and here's the goal of the lesson, is to organize and sort information into, and I've got here my letter grades for one of my classes. I right, take all their letter grades, so here's all their overall scores, and resort them. Uh, my computer does this for me, and resort this into categories so you can get some meaningful information from them, and you get a visual representation of the statistics. So that's what we are going to be doing. <clears throat> So, the example that I have here, if you're in my class, you might have the study guide out. If not, what we're going to be doing is organizing data about floods. So the problem here says flooding is a regular occurrence in the Red River Basin. During the second half of the 20th century, there have been nine notable floods, four of which have been severe, occurring in 1950, 79, 96, and 97. The flood that occurred in 1997 is known as the flood of the century. <clears throat> and here is the following data. So the following data represents the flow rates of the Red River from 1950 to 1999 as recorded at the Redwood Bridge in Winnipeg, Manitoba. So they have year by year what the flow rate under the Redwood, Redwood Bridge in meters cubed per second is at the max maximum water flow. So this looks like a very big jumbled mess, and we'd like to organize this. As you can see, if you flip the page, if you're in my class, it says determine the water flow rate associated with serious flooding by creating a frequency distribution table. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is organize this into categories, or what we call uh, intervals. In order to do that, what we'd first want to do is see if we can identify, and again, you can pause this as, you, as you'd like, identify the lowest flow rate and the greatest flow rate, because then we know kind of the range or dispersion for this. So as I sort through this information, what I notice, I think, unless I'm incorrect, is that the lowest flow rate is 159. I don't think I see a lower number than that. And I think the highest flow rate is 4,587. So to, this is helpful for creating intervals because... If we made intervals, let's say flow rates from 0 to 2,000, so we decided that our intervals were going to be, <clears throat> let's say, go up by 2,000, what you notice here is we'd only have three intervals. Because the lowest value, 159, would go into here, and the highest value, 4,587, would go into that interval, everything else would fall into one of those three categories, and that's not very many intervals. Uh, Likewise, you don't want to have way too many intervals. If you decided that you were going to make your intervals a width of 100, you'd end up having from 0 to 100, and you'd eventually, in your greatest one, you'd have from 4,500 to 4,600, and that would have a total of 46 intervals, which would be a really disjointed, ugly, not pretty uh, <clears throat> bar graph. So what we generally want, as we say, is between 5 and 12 intervals. What I'm going to do for this particular question is create 10 intervals. And it's quite uh, quite easy to do that in this particular case. So uh, you can just guess. I mean, some people know what the intervals could be. Uh, here's another way to do it. So I'm going to show some work here. Uh, one way to do it is, first of all, to figure out the range. So you do the highest minus the lowest. And that gives you some sort of number. So in this particular case, we've got that 4,587 minus 159 gives us a range of 4,428. Then what we do is take that number, and we can divide by the number of desired intervals. So number of intervals. And as I suggested, you generally want between 5 and 12 intervals. <clears throat> so in this case, I'm going to take that range, 4,428. I'm going to divide by 10 intervals. And that gives me an interval width of 442.8. That is not a nice number. So the last thing you want to do is round it to a, and round it up to a nice number or interval width. 
442, the nicest number to round that up to is 500. And what you'll notice here is that if I go up by 500 starting at 0, so let's say I had a flow rate of, so from 0 to 500, this is generally one of the more difficult parts of creating these, <clears throat> is just knowing what interval to use. So there we go. I am going to go up by 500. So what this will do is <clears throat> we'll have a place for every single flow rate to go, and it will make it look like organized data. So we are getting there. Uh, as we sort through this, I'm going to speed through it quickly. Um, but you may want to, if you're in my class, or if you like to practice some organization skills, you may want to try and sort through them yourself. <clears throat> but here's kind of the idea. What you would do is go back here. We have all the data and fit every single flow rate into an interval. So if you would like to do it one at a time, here's what you do. You'd say, okay, this 3,058 flow rate, cross it out. That goes between 3,000 and 3,500. The next flow rate, which is 1,065, that goes into this interval here, between 1,000 and 1,500. The next interval, and then I'm going to start speeding up, 1,008 belongs in this interval as well. So you could just continue to count those and just be careful. Uh, a lot of people tend not to be careful about their statistics, which is not very good. Uh, so as you do this, what you'll actually end up getting, and again, you might want to pause the video and practice this organization piece yourself, because I'm going to fly through this now, is or are these following tallies. And you can check it as well after you're done this. Okay, so this is a tally and frequency table and it's helpful for organizing our data. <clears throat> and what a frequency is, is the number related to the tally. So after you're done tallying them up, you can just count them and get the correct answer, being very careful. I tend to find that uh, about half of people do this incorrectly because they're not terribly careful. So the last thing it says on this question is based on the frequency table, what water flow rate is associated with flooding? They suggested that there were, if you read the question, <clears throat> nine notable floods. So if we count the top nine here, or roughly the top nine, this is our top 10 here. So roughly it would be 2,000 plus. So what water flow rate? Uh, 2,000 meters cubed per second and greater. That's associated roughly with flooding. Now the next thing you want to do, once you've organized data, it's really easy, or it tends to be a little bit more simple, to put that data into a visual representation. Again, a histogram is a bar graph and a frequency polygon is a line graph. I know this lesson's a little bit longer. We're just going to finish this off and we'll do it relatively quickly. Once we have that information sorted, all we need to make sure we do is have a title on both of these. So what I'm going to do is <clears throat> put the flow rate, or my title is going to be flow rate in meters cubed per second. And I'm going to put since 1950. And the frequency polygon, or in other words, the <clears throat> line graph would have the exact same title. So there's a lot of similarities between a bar graph and a line graph. I will show you when they're different. Uh, the next thing to do is to label your axes. So these axes, the bottom axis will be the flow in meters cubed per second. And the nice thing is that we've already come up with the intervals. So we know that we're going up by 500s. And you'd like to do that exact same thing. And again, you might want to try pausing this, do it on your own, but you're going to do this exact same thing on the line graph or frequency polygon. Okay. <clears throat> and we should be done here relatively soon. This part is just a little bit tedious in some ways. <clears throat> go. And on the side, what we need to do is have our frequency or how often that flow rate happened. And I'm just going to write it vertically. So this is frequency. Uh, 
Uh, some of organizing the numbers on the vertical axis just have to do with the space that you're given. In this particular question, I'm only given eight uh, spaces here. And as you see, the highest frequency is 14. So the spacing here might be the best. Again, you can't just, um, you have to go up by a consistent scale. It might be best to go up by twos because then you can include the highest frequency of 14. So my frequency here, <clears throat> you might want to go up by twos. So two, four, six. 8, 10, 12, because the highest frequency, again, is 14. But you can just play around with that spacing, come up with a consistent scale that will fill it up to, to the greatest ability. So now what we're going to do is just take all of those frequencies from each category and fill it in, and I'm almost done here. So here's, there were 6 between 0 and 500 as a flow rate. There were 11 in the next category. Uh, the following category had 9. <clears throat> there were a total of 14 years where the flow rate was between 1,500 and 2,000. <clears throat> then we have 5. One, three. 0, 0, and 1. So this is the bar graph that relates and a visual representation of the flow rates in those years. A uh, line graph is the same. The only difference is you have to be careful that the dot that you put is in the middle of the interval. So when I'm looking at six uh, frequencies between 0 and 500 meters cubed per second, that goes in the middle of the interval. Do not put it on one end of the interval. So you just have to be careful about that. Uh, beyond that, there's not much new to do here, but you do have to also make sure that you represent the zeros. So uh, you'll see that as I get there in just a second. So here's a 9. Here's a 14. Here is a 5. Here's a 1. Here's a 3. <clears throat> and here's a 1. And then you can just connect the dots for your line graph. So here is the frequency polygon or line graph to represent that. But the thing to be careful about, just before we finish, is make sure you don't connect this to the 1. There's also a couple of times when there were 0, so you want to kind of connect those as well.